in step 27 of this Institute of Practical Learning course on self-awareness, we continue talking about motivators and the other three motivators. We cover social acceptance, power and control, and finally wealth and money and possessions. We also talk about what makes a source of input credible. Right, the next question, the next motivator is about your social nature. As a, as a human, you have a hunger within you, uh, a need to be liked and to be loved. So the question that God has on his list is, will it help me be, yeah, the words that come in, it, it may be loved, that'd be great. It may be at the other end, just seen. So will it make me be seen? So for example, uh, the advert says, wear, wear this, um, these Gucci shoes, or you know, all those other brands in the, in the clothing thing that have a, a certain kind of message that make you, you know, look cool and, and be accepted. So seen, accepted. Just accepted into a group, maybe liked. There's a company that makes rum called Bacardi. Um, they used to advertise on television. They used to spend a huge amount on advertising that drink. But it was all these happy young people, quite often on in like wonderful uh, seaside places with palm trees and you know pretty flowers and stuff like that. And they're all having an absolutely wonderful time and they're all getting sloshed on Bacardi. But what you're meant to do as you watch it is think, if I drink Bacardi's, people are gonna like me and I'm gonna have a lot of good time. I'm gonna have a lot of fun. So these inputs come in, but the appeal of that advert, of, you know, they don't just say, that drink Bacardi, it'll help you forget all your problems, which might be down in the safety space, They'll say, drink Bacardi, it'll make you popular or be liked. And maybe quite a lot of these things is drink it and you will find a perfect partner who likes Bacardi as well and you will find love. So the question, the test is in your mind is, will this that's coming in make me more popular, more accepted, help me be loved and so on? And if, it, if the answer is yes, this looks like it will. It's passed. It passes the test if the advert's good enough. It's not so much a need. They're pushing something which you really don't need. I mean, you don't need Bacardi, but through sheer power and repetition of advertising, and as I say, it doesn't have to be Bacardi. It can be any kind of beer or drink or food or clothing. It can be any of those things. But the idea of the advertising is trying to push the score of the input to get it up past this threshold so that it gets in, into your mind. So I'm going to pause again. Right now, the next of the four main motivators is to do with power. So it's, will this input increase my power and control? Now, you may think, I'm not really interested in power. I, I don't want to be president. I don't want to, uh, I don't even want to be a manager. I don't want to be a boss. But on the other hand, you may be working in a company and people just aren't listening to you or your manager's horrible to you. And you feel you want to have more of an impact and, and you've got ideas that you'd like people to accept. So if the information that comes in through these inputs looks like it might be useful to you to increase your power or your control of your personal situation, then you're going to give it a reasonably high score, possibly if you believe it, you'll, it will get in. Now this explains the popularity of these um, self-improvement videos. If you look at a He's a guy called Tony Robinson. Not sure about the name. I've never really watched his stuff very much. But he's got a huge reputation. And he's got millions and millions of hits. 
and you can pay, I don't know how much it costs to go on one of his events. And, it, and especially, there's a huge number of books that are sold about how to increase your personal power, your charisma, how to get promoted at work, how to do this, how to do that. So increasing your personal power, especially once you're in the world of work, when you are being ignored, you, in school, in university, you're not ignored. Your teachers and your lecturers, they're there to shove stuff into your head as much as they can. And they're not going to ignore you because you're a, what's called a bum on the seat. You're, you're there. They need you to stay there. OK, but you have no power. But once you leave university and get a job, this whole business of power and where you are in what's called the pecking order. Are you just a low level grunt at the very lowest? It's called pond life. Are you right down there? Or do you want to be a foreman or do you want to be a junior manager or a senior manager and oh, all that sort of stuff so any inputs that come in that say we can improve improve your power control they get, they get through depending on how well they're done now these things are all about credibility someone telling you i can increase your power and your skills and the quality of your life they they need generally speaking to be from a known source so, for example, Harvard Business School or Yale or Stanford, these are American ones. Or some, you don't tend to get it so much um, Oxford and Cambridge dons. They, they kind of think it's a bit naff to do this sort of thing. But you will find people who purport to be able to teach you something will somehow try and increase your perception of just how good they are at what they do. They'd love to have an identity. So if someone produces a book on management skills, the publishers spend hundreds of thousands of dollars promoting it, saying you really should know about this guy. It, uh, what he's telling you is wonderful. You should believe it. And then what happens is he just tells you all the normal stuff about you know, paying attention, uh, to people, recognizing them, presenting yourself well to them, yada, 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 all the, all the normal stuff that you can pick up from any book, really, or any video. But it so happens that anything to do with that kind of thing appeals to certain people. And millions, that these uh, people, made, like TED Talks, millions of hits they get. Millions. And it's because people are interested, because they hope it'll increase their power. You can probably tell I'm very skeptical about whether it will increase their power because once it, it may get through into the conscious mind, but then very often it fails the next test, which we will be coming on to. But as long as it can get through and stay there long enough for you to buy the book, that's all that matters as far as the people who produce the book is concerned. So that's question number eight. Will it in increase my power and control? of my life. And I said there were four main motivators, so we've done this, safety, being loved and liked, increasing your personal power. So I'm going to pause briefly because it's all quite chunky, this stuff. You need to think about yourself. What, is, what are your motivations? What's important to you? I'm not saying you, you want to be a megalomaniac and run the world. Do you feel anxious? Are you insecure? Or are you like, I'm all right, thanks? In which case, you won't be scoring the inputs very high and they won't come into your conscious mind. Do you feel anxious about being liked? Would you like to be liked more? Nearly everybody would like to be liked more. So there's a good chance if it's well presented, and especially if it's done with fun, because being liked is social activity. Social activity should be fun. So there's a good chance if it's about helping you be liked, it might well go through and you'll watch it and be interested in it. Okay, as I say, I'm gonna pause before we come on to the last motivation area. So the last of the four motivation areas is to do with possessions and ownership and wealth and money. You being richer. So here comes the input and your subconscious mind looks at it and says, will it, will what this person is saying, will this input help me make money or will it help me save money? Now, again, I invite you to just spend 
next time you're watching TV, if you ever do, or when you see adverts, maybe as you drive along, look at the advert. And think, what's this advert about? What, what's it trying to do? How is it trying? What path is it using to try and get into my mind? Is it trying to suggest to me that if you take this action or buy this stuff, it will help you make money? Um, there's zillions and zillions of things on YouTube. Uh, how, to, how to earn, I don't know, $5,000 a week with just 10 minutes of effort or something like that. You've, you've seen them, I don't have to itemize them. Or it can be an advert for a, a course. It could be a degree course somewhere or a qualification. If you come to our college and get this degree, you will be on the fast track to senior management. That's kind of long-term and it's a big, what's called a big ticket item. So. These adverts, when they come in, they're either for like small ticket items of buy our bag of sweeties. They're really nice. It hasn't helped you make money, does it? What does that do? It doesn't, it's not your safety. It might help you be liked, or you might just like eating sweets. But you could, oh, cigarettes, they, when they used to advertise cigarettes, buy our cigarettes. They don't say, they'll kill you. They say, buy our cigarettes, you'll be popular, and you can share your cigarettes with other people, and you'll be liked for buying a cigarette. So I don't think there's any need for me to bang on about the motivator of money. In our societies, in capitalist societies, money, either making money or saving money, is a pretty high motivator. And if it's a really credible advert, or someone approaching you, with a really credible story, the chances of at least passing this first test of this is about making money or saving money, I'm going to pass it through to my conscious mind and it's going to be, I'll test it, I'll evaluate it, but do I think it's credible or not? Is it from an, a known source? Is it an, a known subject? Is it a fact or an opinion? And are they telling me how to make money? So what we've done now is we, we're up to question number nine. We've only got one question left. I'm going to pause before we get to that. Now the Watching adverts and listening to public speakers can be a very interesting way of developing your critical analytical thinking skills. They need practicing. So look at an advert or watch an advert and analyze it from the point of view of motivators. Which of the four main motivators is this advert appealing to? Or if you're listening to a speech from someone, especially people like politicians, think about which of your motivators, sometimes called hot buttons, are they trying to push to get you interested? And is there an ask at the end of it? Are they actually asking you to do something? How are they trying to get you to change in any way? Practice is the secret of developing critical analytical thinking.